The past few years have been incredible ones when it comes to archaeology. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that most of the most incredible discoveries made in the past century have been found within the past decade. We know that's a bold statement, so we're going to show you the proof in this video. It's full of astonishing recent archaeological finds. Our ancient ancestors tried using all manner of things as offerings to the gods in the hope of winning their favor. We know that the Aztecs often indulged in human sacrifice in the hope of pleasing or appeasing their gods, but not all of their offerings were quite so bloody. In March 2022, researchers at the site of Templo Mayor in Mexico City found a treasure trove of starfish that are believed to have been deposited as an offering to an Aztec war god during the early 16th century. There are 164 starfish at the site, along with pufferfish, seashells, and the remains of a jaguar with a spear in its claw. Experts say that the deposit is an offering to the great god Huitzilopochtli. That's the same god that the entire temple is dedicated to. Although Huitzilopochtli shares that billing with Tlaloc, the god of agriculture and rain. The temple was first built in 1325, but underwent extensive renovations at the end of the 15th century. These offerings might have been left at the end of that renovation phase. Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés had the temple buried in 1519, after which it wasn't rediscovered by archaeologists until the 20th century. The near destruction of the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris after a huge fire in 2019 was a tragedy, but it's a tragedy that's allowed archaeologists to investigate the site in a way that was never possible while the cathedral was open. One of the more remarkable discoveries made at the site is a strange lead sarcophagus that was discovered deep in the bowels of the cathedral. Archaeologists believe the sarcophagus dates to the 14th century, but there's no inscription on its surface, so they have no idea who might be inside it. They hope to answer that question by opening the sarcophagus in the near future. The presence of the sarcophagus within the cathedral appears to have been a secret. It was 65 feet below the ground and hidden by the brick pipes of a heating system that was installed during the 19th century. This is the only burial that's been identified within the cathedral. Burial in this famous building would have been an enormous honor, and so we can safely assume that this person was of significant importance during their lifetime, which only makes it all the stranger that they appear to have been forgotten by history. Finding an old Roman mosaic in Italy might not sound especially rare or implausible at first, but wait until you hear where this one was discovered. It's the beautiful floor of what would once have been an enormous Roman villa, and it was found beneath the mud and grass of a vineyard in Negrar di Valpolicella, slightly north of Verona. The frustrating thing about this discovery is that it could have been made a century ago. Archaeologists noted the presence of Roman artifacts in the vineyard in 1922, but decided there was no point in doing any further digging and left the scene alone. If they'd gone another few feet into the earth, they'd have found the mosaic floor, which is covered in fantastic depictions of birds and fruits there and then. The vineyard is part of a commune, so any further excavations will have to be carried out with the permission of the commune's occupants, who would presumably have to be financially compensated for the temporary or permanent loss of their vineyard. That extra layer of complication might mean that the full villa is never excavated, and we never get an answer to the question of who thought planting a vineyard on a mosaic floor was ever a good idea in the first place. Finding an entire underground city is a very rare occurrence for any archaeologists, but if it's going to happen anywhere, it's probably going to happen in Turkey. The country plays host to a surprising number of former underground dwellings, and yet another has come to light recently. This latest underground city has been found in Talas Kayseri, and is thought to date back to the Byzantine era. If the archaeologists responsible for the discovery are right about that assumption, it will make this underground settlement and its accompanying cistern approximately 1,300 years old. The main entrance to the secret city has spent the past 13 centuries hiding in plain sight next to a main road, and excavation is at an early stage, 
but the experts at the scene think that this might have been a religious center. They found tunnels leading to small rooms that appear to have altars in them, and the arrangement of the internal spaces is similar to what's been seen in the past at Derinkuyu. The likely explanation for the existence of the Talos underground city is that it was built by early Christians looking for somewhere to hide from persecution, but that will hopefully be confirmed by research in years to come. We know that the ancient occupants of Scotland were called the Picts, but that's close to being all we know about them. Nearly everything we think we know about this race is drawn from biased Roman records, which makes our next discovery all the more important. It's a carved and engraved Pictish stone, and it was found close to the likely site of an ancient battle that led to the foundation of the Scotland that we know today. To be more specific, the discovery was made in a field in Aberlemno, close to Forfar. The markings on its surface have been interpreted as depicting scenes from the Battle of Nectansmer, which occurred in the 7th century. The battle saw Pictish king Bridey Macbilly defeat Ecfrith, king of the Anglo-Saxons. The defeat prevented the Anglo-Saxons from reaching any further north and provided enough space and time for Scotland to form in the space the Anglo-Saxons had attempted to stake a claim to. The Picts didn't have a written language and kept virtually no historical records, so this stone is about as rare as it gets. Plenty of people in Pompeii were effectively mummified when Mount Vesuvius erupted in the year 79. But there was already at least one person there who'd been mummified on purpose. In late 2021, archaeologists found the tomb of a freed man in the Porta Sarno necropolis close to the east gate of Pompey's walls. The well-preserved tomb contains inscriptions that identify its embalmed occupant as Marcus Venerius Secundio, a former slave who was freed and then rose in status to become a priest of Venus and a member of the cult of divine Augustus. That already makes him interesting, but what's even more interesting is the fact he was deliberately mummified. The practice wasn't entirely confined to ancient Egypt, but mummification in the Roman Empire of the first century was exceptionally rare, as cremation had become the default burial choice. Only those very few occasions where it did happen, it was reserved for only the highest ranking members of the social elite, Archaeologists and historians have no idea how a slave-turned-priest could have qualified for such an honor. And the frustrating thing is that they might never find out. The ancient Romans used ceramic pots for just about everything. They used them to store and transport grain, wine, bread, money, and, as it turns out, human waste. That's right, the Romans also used ceramic pots as portable toilets, and we know that because of a smelly-sounding scientific and archaeological project that concluded in February 2022. A team of experts has been analyzing crusty material found inside the surface of ceramic pots found at the site of a 5th century Roman villa in Sicily. Under a microscope, the crust was found to contain the remains of intestinal parasites. The scientists identified the eggs of whipworm, which is a telltale sign that the ceramic pot once contained human feces. The worm eggs had been clinging to the inside of the pot for more than 1,500 years. They got trapped within layers of mineral that formed on the surface of the pot, ensuring they'd still be there for the scientists to find. We're sure you'll be thrilled to know that the discovery is the first time that parasitic eggs have been found inside a Roman ceramic vessel. Hey. Nobody ever said that being a scientist was a glamorous job. Our next discovery takes us to Jordan, where archaeologists say they found a 9,000-year-old ritual shrine standing in the desert. The discovery, which was made by a combined team of Jordanian and French archaeologists, happened at a remote Neolithic site near Amman, which is already known to archaeologists because of the presence of desert kites, a kind of ancient hunting trap in the area. Based on the proximity of the desert kites, it's likely that the shrine was used to pray to the gods for a successful hunt, give thanks for a successful hunt, or both. The shrine is accompanied by a heart, an altar, 
and a pair of standing stones covered in carvings and anthropomorphic figures and an illustration of a desert kite. Marine shells have been scattered across the area in an act that presumably had some kind of ritual function or symbolism. No shrine of this age has ever been found in such a well-preserved condition in this part of the world before, so it might yet shed new light on the culture, religion, and artistic expression of these nomadic hunters. Now we head to London, England, where a team of experts from the Museum of London Archaeology have uncovered a fabulous ancient Roman mosaic right in the heart of the city. This is the largest preserved mosaic to be found in London for more than half a century, and it was discovered in February 2022. London reached its Roman peak during the early 2nd century, with a population of around 60,000 people enjoying access to a large Roman forum and an enormous basilica, which was one of the biggest in the entire Roman Empire at the time. The mosaic was found during excavations at a site close to the famous Shard Building, where preparations are being made for new offices and homes to be built. It's split into two decorated panels made from tiny colored tiles set into a tessellated red floor. The archaeologists think the mosaic might have been the floor of a dining room within a large Roman mancio, not to be confused with a mansion. This would have been the ancient Roman equivalent of an upmarket hotel offering stabling, dining, and accommodation for state officials traveling to and from London, from Rome, and other important cities in the empire. Our next discovery is very similar to what we've just seen, and comes from the Croatian island of Hvar, or to be more precise, from beneath the streets of Stari Grad on Hvar. Archaeologists on the island are currently celebrating the discovery of an intricate and beautiful Roman-era mosaic. They think the geometric mosaic was part of a large Roman villa that once stood there. The mosaic is just two feet below street level, so it's thought to be a near miracle that it hasn't been extensively damaged by water intrusion. The threat of water intrusion is even worse now the mosaic has been exposed. This part of the island is very close to sea level, and flooding is a routine problem. Archaeologists and residents both hope that funding will be provided for a plexiglass cover, so the mosaic can be protected from the elements while remaining visible to all who walk down the street. Before that can be done, though, further excavations will have to be carried out. The experts need to know how much of the mosaic is still there beneath the ground before they can work out how best to protect it. The Folkton drums were found in the grave of a child in the village of Folkton, Yorkshire, England in 1889. They've been a mystery ever since, but the mystery might finally have been solved. Calling the artifacts drums is a little misleading. There are three of the cylindrical objects, all of which are made from solid chalk and elaborately decorated with carved symbols. Tests carried out in 2015 showed that the markings may have been added several centuries after the cylinders were first carved 4,600 years ago. The practice of burying people with grave goods in the British Isles is thought to have begun about 5,000 years ago, so examples of British grave goods don't come much older than this. One of the drums was positioned behind the child's head, and the other two were on either side of its hips. If the findings of the 2015 tests are accurate, the grave must have been dug up, after which the inscriptions were added and then both the remains and the drums were reburied. We have no idea why anyone would do that, but then we have no idea what purpose they serve to begin with. A very similar drum, now known as the Burton Agnes drum, was found in February 2022. Archaeologists are still trying to work out if it's connected to the original three. For the past 12 months, Archaeologists have been recovering old cannons from the Savannah River in Georgia, USA. They've been turning up at a rate of more than one every month. So, as of the end of April 2022, there are 19 of them. Scientists have tested the cannons and believe them to be around 240 years old. Rather than being American weapons, it's almost certain that they came from British ships that were scuttled during the Revolutionary War. The first of the cannons was found by accident. There's an ongoing plan to deepen the river's shipping channel, and a dredge being used to do precisely that emerged from the river in early 2021. 
clasping a cannon in its jaws. That prompted archaeologists to get in the water and perform a more thorough check, and so the chain of discoveries began. At first, it was thought that the cannons would turn out to be relics from a Confederate gunship, the wreckage of which was found in the river several years ago. But that isn't the case. Military historians confirmed that the cannons aren't of American design, and so that means that almost by default, they have to be relics of the Siege of Savannah in 1779. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!